Good morning, everyone. I decided to do a uh, update video on my garden, on my container garden. Um, a few people asked, so I decided to make one today. I'm just going to go over um, everything that I'm growing in containers, and then I'll talk a little bit about uh, growing in containers. Over here I have, um, I don't know what kind of uh, pepper this is. It's a, I think it's a... Uh, Giant Marcone, I guess that's what it's called. <laughs> but that's a, a kind of, it's a, it's a variety of a bell pepper, a sweet pepper in this container. And these are all tomatoes. Lemon Boy and uh, I think Amelia is what I'm growing in these uh, three containers. You kind of, once you start growing a lot, I kind of forget about the varieties. Just Oh, it's just a tomato. But these are tomatoes. <laughs> Lots of blooms, as you can see in there. So, I'm excited about these. They're doing pretty well. Um, this is a pixie uh, grape variety, and it's a Riesling. So, they're perfect for containers. They don't get that small. So, this is something new that I'm trying this year, and I'll update you guys on its progress. But they're perfect for containers. So, if you have a, you know, if you don't have the means to grow... And, um, you know, you don't have the, the land or you don't have the space. You live in an apartment. You have a small backyard or your soil is bad or whatever. You are you might be disabled or elderly and can't bend down that much. You know, you can always raise containers up to a higher level. Then container gardening might be perfect for you. Um, so if you want to try grapes, you can grow grapes in containers. So... I'll update you guys on the progress of the pixie grape. These are carrots. This variety is called uh, Parasinine. I hope I'm pronoun pronouncing it correctly. Um, they also call it Thumbelina. So, you know, you can grow carrots in containers. And this variety is good to grow in containers because they um, don't get that big. They're short and fat. They're not long. So you can grow a long variety of carrots in containers. You just have to have a lot of long, deep soil. So... That's, I'm definitely trying to prove to everybody that you can grow anything in containers. Um, it can be done. It's a little bit more work, but, you know, it's worth it for those that just don't have the means to grow in ground. So, it's possible. Here's another new thing that I'm trying this year. I like to try new things every year. These are artichokes in these three big containers. And um, they take a long time to mature. I think about 120, 130 days. I planted these in... Ooh, I think towards like the beginning of March and they're doing really well um, I did have some issues with the bottoms leaves yellowing so I just sprinkled some blood meal and some crushed up coffee grounds which is uh, bo both good sources of nitrogen and that cleared it up um, I am having a problem now with a li little leaf spot so I'm gonna look that up and see they might need some potassium or magnesium or something so I'm just going to look that up and see what I can do um, to provide it for the plants. But other than that, they're doing really well. It's a beautiful plant. Um, you know, my mom, my mom is kind of opposite. My mom is great with flowers and houseplants. She grows in containers too, a few vegetables. But that's her thing, houseplants, flowers. And I love veggies. I will kill a house flower, a house plant in a week. I just don't know what it is. I follow the directions and they just die. So I have no house plants in my house. But uh, my mom thought this was some type of a uh, tropical plant and I told her, no, it's artichoke. So, you know, they look beautiful. So this would definitely be a good uh, landscaping plant if you want to mix in with your, you know, in your front yard or whatever. But they're doing good. So that's another plant that I'll update you on the progress of. Can't wait to have some artichokes, some roast them in the oven with some lemon butter, a little sprinkle parmesan cheese and make some homemade uh, lemon basil aioli to dip them in. Oh gosh, I'm just my mouth is watering thinking about them. <laughs> but I will update you on the progress of the artichokes, but I'm happy they're doing pretty good. As you can see, I have a pretty big backyard and a lot of people ask me, am I going to plant in ground? I am. Um, for those that don't know me well, because I'm going to uh, um, 
I'm going to upload this onto YouTube. I have a daughter that's special needs. She has spinal muscular atrophy, type 1, which is pretty much like ALS. I know a lot of people have heard of ALS. Um, but uh, SMA, that's what they call spinal muscular atrophy for short, is in babies. Um, so my daughter takes up a lot of my time. So I have to really think about what I have to take care of before I get into deep. <laughs> I'm definitely going to plan and ground, and I did try it last year. We brought this house. We've been in the house for a little over a year. I did try it last year, but the weeds took over. So I know before I really start planting in, in my backyard, I'm going to have to really work on the weeds. I plan on putting weed sheet, making a big square, <laughs> and putting weed sheet, sheet down, maybe some leaves or cardboard or something, and just letting it sit for six months and letting that just kill the grass and kill the weeds because you can see I have that's um spider wart right there I hate that stuff it's all over my backyard it's so invasive um so I really have to work on the weeds so I'm going to work on that before I even plant in the ground because I tried it last year and the tomatoes the weeds just killed the tomatoes I planted okra and squash and the okra and squash did pretty good but it, the weeds still took over, so uh, I'm really going to have to work. And anybody has any good suggestions of the way that I can kill the weeds and naturally and really work on conditioning my soil, please let me know. But the soil seems pretty fertile, so I'm excited about that. Um, over here, I'm going to show you guys this before I move to the big section of my container garden. That's a satsuma tree, and if, you know, satsumas, for those who don't know, satsumas are, it's just a type of mandarin orange. Um, sweet, a little sour, and last year, we were so blessed and lucky to have this tree. The owner said that they, you know, they said they planted this tree right after they built the house. So, and that was in 78. So, we're lucky to have this tree on our property, and last year, we had so many satsumas. We were overrun with them. This year, we're not going to have as many. Um, I noticed, I just looked and noticed some of the blooms got knocked off when we had a bad storm. And, you know, sometimes trees take a break every other year. But there's a good amount on the tree, just not nowhere as near as many as last year. But I will do a video um, about the Satsuma tree later on in the year, let y'all know its progress. But they are delicious. And satsumas can handle frost, so if you're interested in growing citrus, um, that's definitely a variety that you can grow. These, this one that looks like a stick, this is an apple tree. Um, uh, I, I can't remember the variety. <laughs> but um, it's just not having, it's just not putting out a lot of leaves. I don't know much about growing fruit trees, I'm learning. So, um, but the leaves are sprouting. Now this one right there, that right there, that the that's another apple tree. It's really put out a lot of leaves. So behind the apple trees, you can see those little bushes right there. And there's one right there. Those are elderberry. And um, my friend, Facebook friend, Karen McMaster got me hooked on elderberry um, syrup. It's, I mean, if we feel a sniffle, a cough, a sore throat or anything come on, we um she makes elderberry syrup she sent me some i can just take a teaspoon of that and it'll be gone within a day very high in vitamin c elderberry is very good for you and it grows wild and i planted those bushes brought those brought those plants didn't notice that you can see those white flowers growing over there right there all that is wild eld elderberry and i've got it over there too and this is a creek right here. You can actually walk behind that fence and go all the way down. There's wild elderberry growing all over the place. I'm like, I just wasted my money <laughs> on buying these elderberry plants. And I have wild elderberry all in my backyard. It's crazy. But that's okay. We'll just be um, full of vitamin C. But I'm definitely going to try to uh, maybe get my dad to put his ladder up there and see if he'll be willing to climb up it and harvest some of the the berries for me but you can also make pies and jam and jelly with elderberry um if any of you guys watch the walking dead you remember herschel when they had that flu going through the prison herschel went and uh looked for elderberry in the woods to help calm the symptoms 
of some of the people that were sick. So I know some people probably, well, I've heard Elderberry before. I know a lot of people watch The Walking Dead. I'm a Walking Dead fan. So um, it's real. You know, that wasn't something that he made up. Elderberry is good for you. So um, if you're interested in it, there's lots of videos and, you know, information online about Elderberry. So there's my little tip about it. Yep, I wasted all my money and I have wild elderberry growing everywhere. <laughs> all right, I'm just gonna walk over here. Here's the bigger section of my container garden. Um, doing pretty good, looks like a wild jungle right now. But I'm definitely happy with everything's pro the progress of everything. These four plants right here are eggplant. And um, it's Italian variety, uh, oh my gosh. These names are tough. I can't even remember. I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> it's an Italian name. I'm gonna put the information in the, uh, the comment section for you guys. But it's a, a striped v variety, white and purple stripes. Very pretty. So that's eggplant. This is a Valencia orange. And yes, you can grow citrus in containers. I found that, you know, um, watering every day works. For me so that's what I do so that's a Valencia orange uh, this is a tomato plant this is a new variety I'm trying this year um, called tumbling Tom uh, supposedly it does not need support it just tumbles over the pot so that's that variety these are all peppers jalapenos I make a lot of pepper jelly and from moving last year and just a lot of things going on, I was so tired. So I didn't do a lot of canning like I normally do. And I normally sell my pepper jelly or sometimes I give it away. And uh, I didn't make any last year and a lot of people were upset with me. <laughs> so yes, I will be making pepper jelly this year. So I've got a lot of jalapenos growing. So you guys look forward. I tasted one jalapeno yesterday and it had no spice and normally that happens for me normally once it starts to get hot because peppers are considered a tropical plant then my pe hot peppers heat up so once it starts to get really really hot in mobile they'll get spicy but I, I just bit that pepper I ate the ha whole jalapeno no spice whatsoever so these are all tomatoes I've got some uh excuse me celebrity in there oh gosh when I started some seeds inside, the tags got, with the Sharpie, just completely waterlogged, and I couldn't read anything. Excuse me, my throat's getting dry. So I have, uh, there's black creme in there, there's, uh, Roma, um, I've got some striped varieties, just all mixed in there. So I was like, oh, well, I'm just going to plant everything, and once it produces, I'll know what it is. But these are all tomatoes. You can see I've got some tomatoes growing in there. More tomatoes all in there. Another tomato. These are some pepper varieties. Jalapeno. Um, see the slugs got to this one. And I noticed the frogs started jumping around. They were eating the slugs. Ever since I started seeing frogs, the slugs disappeared. So, if you're like me and try to be as natural as possible, you definitely want to attract um, good pests, good bugs, I might say, because they're not pests, and uh, critters <laughs> that can help you in your garden. You can make frog houses that will attract frogs, and um, since we live near the creek, we got a lot of frogs and turtles and snakes, which I don't like, but... <laughs> The frogs really help me. They've been eating the slugs and I haven't really seen as much slug damage on my peppers. I don't know what it is about these two peppers. This is the only thing that has a lot of slug damage. I don't know if it's those bags I'm growing in, but they just, for some reason, they like these plants. But the frogs have been helping, so. More tomatoes. These are all tomatoes, as you can see. The tomatoes in there growing. Um... I got two avocado pits growing in a small pie. They haven't sprouted yet. I hope they do well. Potatoes. They're in some. You can't really see the bags. Let me see if I can go in here. But you can see that. But they're growing in the uh, some grow sacks. Ooh. And I've got more tomatoes, of course. This is my little herb section. I've got a lot of basil growing. 
mint, thyme. I use a lot of herbs. Oregano's in there. Rosemary. And um, I've also, another a new herb I'm trying this year is perilla. Um, I've been doing a lot of Korean dishes and they eat perilla leaves or shisho leaf is another name for it. Um, so I'm growing that for the first time. So I'm looking forward to trying it. There's parsley, Italian flat leaf parsley over in here too, right over in here. You can see cucumbers. This is cucumbers too. I don't know if any of you guys know about these grow boxes. Um, they work great. Um, so I know a lot of people are, you know, do they really work? They work great. As long as you keep them watered, you follow the directions for setting it up and keep them watered, your plants will do fine. This is a yellow crookneck squash, and I have been looking, I'm going to sit down for a second, for so many ways to fight the squash vine borer. I've tried everything. I've tried wrapping the stem in foil, wrapping the, uh, putting pantyhose around the stem. I set up traps. I bought traps. That didn't work. I might have caught one or two squash vine borer moths, but that's not before they lay their eggs, so that didn't work. Um, even as organic as I am, and I hate it, I actually tried growing squash in a container far away from my garden and spraying seven. And I just wanted to experiment and see if it would work. It still didn't work. The squash vine borers still killed my squash plants. And I said, I'm about to give up. I just cannot grow squash in the south. Now, I know probably what I should do is either start it very early in the spring before they come or um, start it late after the moths have done their thing. But I'm still stubborn. I still try because I love zucchini. I love yellow squash. So I was looking last night on um, YouTube to see if there's anything new that I've missed that I can try. And this lady that I saw said that she, one year, she had a squash plant. And she, you know, like me, hates to throw away plants. It was extra. So she planted it near her cucumbers. And she noticed that she did not have a problem with squash vine borers that year. So she said, well, next year I'm going to try this again. I'm actually going to make a whole section for just squash and cucumbers. And she said, once again, she did not have problems with the squash vine borer. For some reason, they don't like the cucumbers or something. I saw that last night. This morning, the first thing I did when I came out here before I watered my garden was I went and got this squash plant and I moved it over here. <laughs> Let's see if it works. I hope it works. But that's the yellow squash and these are cucumbers. This variety is called Space Master. And if, if you have limited space, that's why it's called Space Master. It saves your space. Very short vines, which is perfect if you have limited space. So um, you can see it's growing really well. They were really small about a week and a half ago, and then all of a sudden they just took off. So they're doing really well in that uh, grow box. And you can see that's the grow box right there. Um, and I'll put some information and link the company, but these are, are a Cherokee purple variety and they're doing really well. Got a lot of tomatoes in there. There's more tomatoes behind that. You can see the containers. This right here is a pink variegated lemon, and um, I have not had any lemons grow on it yet because the frost hit it. We got a really hard frost uh, about three or four years ago where it had dropped down to like 19 degrees, which is really not normal for my area because it normally just, we have very mild winters. And I thought throwing a sheet over it would be enough, but it wasn't. I should have brought it inside and it, you know damaged the tree but luckily it came back so it's still in its healing mode so it hasn't bloomed yet i'm hoping maybe it'll bloom we'll see um but uh yeah it's very pretty the leaves are beautiful all right so this is my container garden you've guys seen everything um i want to encourage you guys i know some people down container gardening but not everybody has the, you know, like I said earlier, not everybody has the means to grow in ground or in raised beds. You might not have space. You might not have a backyard. You might have a small patio area in your apartment. Um, you might not be able to physically grow in ground. You might have, a, you know, you might be disabled or elderly. Um, I just want to prove that growing in containers can be done. Um, 
the most important thing about growing in containers is water. Water, 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 water. You have to water every day. Sometimes you might have to water twice a day, depending on what part of the country you live in. It might get extremely hot, like it does here in Mobile, and your plant's just going to might need some extra uh, um, water. So you might have to do twice a day. But watering every day, for me, I water in the morning time, will help your plants uh, thrive and produce well. And the only reason why you have to water every day, because your containers are limited to what you give them. You know, when you're growing in, in the ground, your plants can, the plants can pull the natural moisture from the soil. Well, in containers, there's no natural moisture. It's just the container and that's it. And the plants are expecting you to provide that extra water for them. So, watering every day is imp very important. Um, you're going to have to feed them more often, too. Depending on the, what type of... Uh, fertilizer you're using you are going to have to give them uh, if you're using like a water a liquid fertilizer or water soluble fertilizer um, I recommend watering um, excuse me feeding them every seven days if you're doing like a granular fertilizer every two to three weeks would be good I also recommend you supplementing um, the fertilizer uh, switching out every other week or maybe every two weeks or whatever, um, giving them maybe something like seaweed extract, which is what I use. Um, this is what I use. This is the variety that I, I use for the uh, seaweed extract. It's a, it's a um, extract, like I said, and you have to dilute it in water. Um, but they also have powder forms that you can use to make your own extract. Um, or maybe a fish emulsion or just si or using like mupu tea and I know that's another good thing to supplement with because your container veggies are going to get hungry they just need extra food because once again they're not growing in ground they can't pull no n natural nutrients from the soil you're going to have to give the plants that so feeding often watering every day is very important as you can see I've got stakes in my buckets for support for the tomatoes you can figure out whatever uh, support system you want for your tomatoes and peppers, but they're definitely going to need support because once the fruit gets heavy, it can weigh the plant down and your stems can snap or break and you don't want that to happen. So support is important too. Um, make sure you, of course, give your plants enough sunlight. Um, it's kind of dark right now, but this area gets a lot of sun once the clouds are moving. It's kind of cloudy. But, you know, good sunlight is important for container grown veggies. And make sure if you're using these five-gallon buckets, make sure you, a lot of people have been asking me this year, make sure you drill holes in the bottom or on the sides for drainage. You don't want your plants to get uh, root rot just sitting in water. So drainage holes is very important. So three to four holes is, is enough. Um, using the proper size container is important, too. Uh, you don't want to put a tomato in a two gallon container not enough space um, your plant will get root bound and stop growing it'll be stunted I tell everybody I recommend for tomatoes five gallons or larger these are five gallon buckets five gallons or larger for tomatoes they need the space they have huge root systems um, if you can go even bigger if you can afford even bigger that's great but five gallons or larger is is what tomatoes need and I don't care what variety you're growing Five gallons is, 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 to me, is the least amount size you can go for growing in uh, containers for tomatoes. Peppers can do two gallons and up. Herbs, one gallon and up. Um, things like peas. Peas have very short root systems. Uh, one gallon and up is good for peas. Um, mind your container size. Container size is very important. Don't overcrowd your containers. Um... For tomatoes, I recommend, unless you have a humongous container, I recommend sticking to one plant per container, unless it's very, very big and you can space them out. Um, space your plants, you know, accordingly. Um, I think you might be able to get away with growing two peppers in a five-gallon plant, but I, I mean, container, but I wouldn't do it. But make sure you uh, mind your container size. That's very important because... 
you know, it's it's small. It's not a big surface area. And you want to make sure your plant has, the roots have a, you know, a lot of air and, um, you know, a place to go and a place to grow. So don't overcrowd your containers. Um, make sure you space stuff out. Don't grow, um, uh, say, for example, peas or whatever. Don't put them so close together. Spread them out. I know you can put, you can place stuff a little closer together when you're growing your ground, but I mean, you're, when you're growing your ground, your plants have all this soil, the roots have all the soil to spread to. Well, in the containers, it's not like that. So like I said, I'll repeat it again. <laughs> Mind your container size and make sure you choose the right container for the right job. So um, that's my, uh, my uh, tips for container growing. Some uh, some uh, pros for container growing is, like I said, it's it's easier to plant in containers as far as you don't have to worry about um breaking your back, bending down, planting in the soil. It's a lot easier that way. It's virtually no weeding. You know, it's the soil that you put in the containers. The soil mixture I use is I use potting soil. Composted cow manure. I use the black cow brand. It's in a yellow bag. It's cow spelled with a K. I know Home Depot and Lowe's sells it. And a lot of these uh, feed and seed stores sell it too. I've been using it for years. The compost, it's all composted naturally. No smell, which I love about it. And um, it just works great. So that's what I use. So I use potting soil. I use the composted cow manure and I use peat moss. And the peat moss helps retain moisture and nutrients. I don't use it sparingly. And when I mean semi sparingly, um, per probably per five fallon, uh, five, five gallon buckets, I might toss three handfuls into a big wheelbarrow of soil. I don't put a lot, a little bit goes a long way. It adds acidity to your plants and you don't want your uh um especially like tomatoes to be you don't want the soil to be too acidic so i i use the peat moss very sparingly to me a little bit goes a long way but it helps hold no nutrients and moisture so um it works for me which is good because when i live you know live in a hot area you definitely want to retain moisture and another thing that i'm planning on doing this week is you can mulch your containers you can add just regular plain mulch nothing with the dyes or chemicals or anything and none of that colored red stuff or black mulch or just regular plain wood chip mulch um you can add that around your pot your containers at the base to help retain moisture that works too um as far as my fertilizer let's see if i can reach it oh i use this is a new brand that i started using last year and it works great i love it I've really noticed a difference in my plants. And I was just using, um, what was I using before? Um, uh, it's a water soluble brand I was using before. It worked okay. But I'm using Eco Scraps. It's natural and organic. And it works great. This is the variety that I use. And um, all I do is put about four t tablespoons of it on the outside of each container. And water it in and I do that maybe every other month and the reason why I do that is because I'm following the directions and I know I had said uh, for the granular granular use uh, before I think I said what do it every three to four weeks but I've noticed for these plants especially since I'm supplementing them a lot and this brand, I, I, I use it every other month, and it works great for me. So that's what I use. I use Eco Scraps. Um, they have uh, different, different kind, different formulas. Uh, Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's sells it. Um, and you might be able to find it at your uh, nursery stores or whatever. But that's the brand fertilizer that I use. Well, I am going to come to a close because this video is extremely long. It's almost 30 minutes long. Um, I just wanted to share you guys my update for my garden. Everything's growing really well and fast. I'm going to have a lot of work to do, a lot of canning. I can a lot and make a lot of tomato sauce and salsa. We go through tons of salsa throughout the year, so I make a lot. 
Um, and I'll do some canning videos for you guys. Um, but I just wanted to update you on my garden. Love y'all. Have a great day. I am Ebony, and they nicknamed me the Container Queen. I love you guys. If you have any questions about container gardening, gardening, um, feel free to leave a comment underneath this video. Please take the time to like the video if you like to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Um, look for more videos, cooking videos, baking, and updates on my gardening um, adventures. I love y'all. Hope this encouraged you to grow some um, veggies for your family. Have a great day.